Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you go get gas, there may be some things in your brake system that may be holding you back from getting the best fuel mileage. The brake related areas that could be affecting your fuel mileage are the brake caliper, the caliper bracket, the brake pads, the parking brake, and the parking brake cable. And all these parts are available at 1AAuto.com. All right, it's pretty obvious the brakes are binding on this vehicle, and that's what's going to cause your fuel mileage to go down. If the engine has to work harder to push the vehicle, it's burning more gas. If you have binding in the rear, another added thing you want to check into is the parking brake system. One of the things that's going to help determine whether we have something going on with the conventional brakes or whether it's with the parking brake is with the vehicle raised up a little bit, just pump the brake pedal pretty much push down as hard as possible. And then you can also go to the parking brake and exercise that a few times and see if that binds up. And then when it's down, go check the wheels. And then with the brake released, go and try to turn the wheel, obviously on the rear wheels. And if one's binding up more, then it's probably something to do with the parking brake or the brake cable. Now I'm just going to pull this apart, take the wheels off. Now you can take a pry bar. In some vehicles you have access with the caliper open like this. And we can just try to pry the caliper back, compress the piston a little bit, and see if it moves. If you can't compress the piston, then there's something going on there. And just pry this off. So this is the piston in question. If this is binding up, you're going to look around at the dust boot. If you see any rips in that, then outside elements have gotten in there and that's going to corrode that and that's going to prevent it from being able to go back into the caliper itself. Now you can take a brake caliper compressing tool and put it in there and see if you can compress the caliper. The problem is because the tool gives you so much mechanical advantage that it's hard to tell whether it's binding up unless it's completely frozen and you can't turn it at all. So one thing people forget to think about when having a caliper that's binding up is the possibility there could be something wrong with the hose. You could have pressure coming into the caliper. There's pressure built up in there, but it's not releasing the pressure back, and that's what's binding up the caliper itself. One way to check that when you're compressing the caliper, if it's not moving, you can open up the bleeder screw. Judging by this bleeder screw, um, we definitely have something going on with the caliper anyway. But if you were to open up the bleeder screw and then you were able to compress the piston into the caliper, then you have a blockage either right here in the hose or somewhere else down the line. Now we want to check out the brake caliper bracket. We're looking specifically at these pins. These slide in and out and there's a boot around them. You want to make sure those boots look good and this slides in and out fairly easily. Basically when the caliper gets compressed, it's pulling the caliper towards the inside of the vehicle just to apply this outer pad and it uses these pins to slide back and forth. Well, if that pin is bound up just like this bottom one, then after the caliper gets compressed, it's gonna be pushing on this brake pad and that's gonna stay snug up against the rotor while you're going down the road because it's gonna compress it and then this is frozen. Now let's talk about the brake pads themselves. They should move freely in this bracket. It should not be a struggle and these pads are frozen in there. So those are staying secured while you're going down the road. All this stuff combined is actually like someone pushing on the brake pedal while you're trying to drive. All right, now I'm gonna take the bracket off. I'm gonna take the rotor off. This rotor, I have access to be able to put a couple of threaded bolts in. It's gonna help me remove the rotor. It's not like this on every vehicle, but. There we go. 
So this has a parking shoe that's separate from the brake pads themselves. When you activate the parking brake, it pulls on this cable back here that's attached to a lever, and that's attached to these shoes that pushes out on the inside of this rotor. There's a little drum, and that's what's gonna stop the vehicle from rolling. Let's take a look at the parking brake cables. Now, if you look right here, you see the spring. That's gonna bring the parking brake cable back to where it needs to be when the cable is released. If the cable is released or the parking brake lever is released, this spring should look like this. If it happens to be still compressed, then there's something going on with the cable and you wanna take a look at that. So go down the cable, see if you see anywhere where it's swollen, where there's some rust or corrosion, just follow it along. See at the bracket, it's rusty, but that's okay. That's not causing any, any damage right now. With an assistant in the car, you can take a look at the junction where all the cables come together and have them activate it. Go ahead, Cam. And you can watch and see if there's anything binding up. Go ahead, release it. and see everything's working smoothly. The front cable is pulling in and it's pulling out the other two cables. If you notice that one of the cables is not moving, then obviously that's the cable that's frozen. These just slide off like this. And if you notice the thickness of the shoes right here, that's about normal. If you see that they're worn down to almost nothing, then they've been dragging when they shouldn't have been or they're worn out. This adjuster is all bound up on this side. This side at least moves, and that's the side that is gonna be pushed out while you activate the cable, uh, which is good at least that side is, but this side should not be bound up like this. So you wanna take this out. And this should be able to twist in here. So we could soak this with some rust penetrant and try to loosen it up or replace it. I'm gonna put this in a vise and just take a pry bar, just try to loosen this up. And I got it to break free. Just take it, take it apart, wire brush it, put some grease on it, put it back together. It should be fine. All right, so it's all apart. Now we're gonna go back together. We're gonna to use all these great parts that we got from oneauto.com, and this is gonna fix our dragging issue to help correct some of that fuel mileage issue. With the new bracket, just put a little grease in here. And these are the areas you would wanna take a wire brush and make sure it's nice and clean. Put the pad slides on. Another thin coat of grease. That's gonna pre prevent some of the corrosion on there and help the pads slide nice and easily back and forth. Then if you take the brake pads and slide them in the bracket, I can show you how loose they should be. So they should be able to slide fairly easily, just like this, you know. Not too loose so they fall out, but just enough so if you push on them, they're able to slide back. That's what you want. Same with this side. So if there's excessive corrosion in there, they're gonna bind up, the pads are gonna bind up. So that looks good. And also with the pins, these pins move nice and easy and the boots are all sealed properly. There should be grease in there, which there is. Now we can install it on the vehicle. Now put a little bit of grease on the end of this adjuster. Reinstall that, just so it doesn't seize up in there. Now just slide this in place. There we go. That's in. Get that to line up. You can make your adjustments. Clips in down below, so that's good.
Now I'm going to take and swap the brake hose over to the new brake caliper. We're going to take this banjo bolt out and real quickly I'm going to move it over. It's never a good idea to pinch off these hydraulic hoses. You can collapse the hose and cause more damage than good. So we'll swap that over and make sure the master cylinder has enough brake fluid. You don't want to be draining the brake fluid to nothing. Um, then it's harder to bleed the brakes in the end. Slide that off. A little bit of brake fluid. One seal goes on the back side of the bolt. One seal goes on the front side. Make sure the brake hose is not twisted when you're doing this. Now I'll just pop the cap off right here, open up the bleeder screw. I'm going to start by gravity bleeding it, wait till some of the fluid comes out of there. Then I can close it, then I can have an assistant help me pump the brake pedal. All right, so that's dripping now. We'll just close that up and we'll bleed them the regular way. All right, pump them. Nice and slow. One more time and hold it. Holding? Holding. I'll open this up. And a little bit of air came out. We'll do it one more time. And hold it. Holding. And that looked good. There was no air in that one. Now I'll put this cap back on. We can spray some brake parts cleaner down there and we'll be good to go. I'll put the tire on. Get the lug nuts on. All right, let's give it a spin. And that's significantly better than before. It's not binding up anymore. That's not gonna have as much resistance going down the road. That's the normal noise we wanna hear. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. And if you need parts for your vehicle, make sure you click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com.